eternal being. This allows me to bring positivity to any negative situation. Eternal being. To plant seeds of benevolence means that I plant seeds of pure compassion and love in the world. It means that from my heart, I truly want to reach out and uplift the world around me. True benevolence cannot be contrived. It comes from one place. When the heart is clean, when the mind is quiet, when we can drop our stories and dramas and be in the pure energy of the soul, we will hear two things. One is the sound of peace inside, the sound of the beauty of the world. But the other is the sound of sorrow that exists in the world. Our ability to hear the pain and respond to that pain like a mother would to a crying child becomes enhanced by silence. To be benevolent, I have to learn to be silent. Take a moment now and just let everything go. Let your stories go, let the drama go. And visualize yourself up on a beautiful mountain, high, high above the world. A place of pristine and pure silence. where you can feel that great quiet mystery of the world. Breathe this silence in until it infuses every cell, every part of your being. Allow the stillness to massage your being until you feel completely relaxed. And now prepare yourself to plant the silence in the world through your mind. Imagine that above you there is a divine, pure and beautiful light. The light of the supreme energy. And feel this light as it cascades down on the world below you. Feel this light as it pours like a waterfall, washing away the worries of the world, cleaning every mind, refreshing every heart. Just visualize this healing light pouring over the entire world, soothing hearts, soothing fears, healing the elements, nurturing every mind so that the whole world feels a sense of connection, so that the whole world somehow senses they are not alone, but are infinitely connected to an abundant source of light and love.
If I truly want to be benevolent, I have to learn the art of silence and create these small moments where I drop my story and send out peaceful, pure energy to the world around me. And I can do this while I'm with friends and family. I can do this while I'm going about my daily chores and duties. All I have to do is drop my story, be still, and send the world the energy of pure peace and love. This practice can do wonders. afternoon everyone om shanti greetings of peace welcome to a positive home through a positive attitude parenting series from brahmakumari silicon valley i am the host for these sessions megna and um, like the last few times we will get started with a meditation so please join me Let's sit comfortably and make the body as still as possible. When the body is still, it is easier to make the mind still. Let's relax and take few deep breaths in silence. Breathe in purity, honesty, and tranquility. This is who you really are pure, honest, peaceful. And breathe out. Release all the negativity because this is not who you are. 
it's time to connect to our pure, innocent, eternal being. Let's take a few minutes to reflect on how our day went today. Check were you thankful, grateful? Did you find yourself to be blessed? Or was your mind Grumbling, thinking about all the lackings and missings. We have a choice. It is a choice that we are making at every moment to have an attitude of blessing or missing. Blessings cannot be purchased in any mall. They can't be asked for. Although we do ask many times blessings from people, saints, God. But spirituality teaches us consider yourself to be a blessed soul that is your life and you everything about you is perfect there is nothing lacking Accept, embrace, feel blessed. The mind will continue to point all the lackings in us, in others, and in life. So should we ignore such a mind? What do we do? Some of those points that the mind brings up are true. And many are false. Indeed, I need to aspire to be a better version of myself. So I do need to have a North Star, a higher image of myself, a vision of how I want my life to be. But I cannot reach that higher vision, that better version, till I embrace my present and experience the blessings I already have. Blessings are power. They amplify the zeal and enthusiasm of the soul and enable it to move forward in an excited manner towards the future. 
But when I don't accept my present and I focus on all the lackings and missings, I am stepping backwards and I am being stuck in the past. And if I sit myself on the top of the globe and I look at the entire world, there are many who don't get three meals a day. There are many who don't have a home or a family. There are many are experiencing violence. And then I look at my life. Am I blessed? Or do I still find lackings? It's only when our heart is full of realization of how blessed we are, how fortunate we are, that is when heartfelt gratitude towards life, nature, God, and people automatically emerges. And the one that has such a warm, sincere, grateful heart they will give Blessings to everyone automatically. They will never ask for blessings because blessings are received automatically by a being with pure heart pure intentions and pure feelings. Such a beautiful, pure being always performs elevated deeds. In fact, such a being is directly sustained by God. So do I want to count my blessings and be sustained by God and get His blessings too? Or do I want to focus on my missings and ask and beg for blessings. What do I want? It is clear I am already a blessed soul. Welcome everyone once again uh, to a positive home through a positive attitude. Uh, today we will focus on attitude number three, which is being a benefactor. And we can even think about being a world benefactor, but in general, what does it mean to be a benefactor? And uh, we are trying to choose some unique um, attitudes 
um, so that uh, you know we can uh, kind of learn something new and um, also the reason we've uh, chosen these kind of attitudes is because they will really help us in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and if it is okay that uh, we save the questions and thoughts uh, to the, towards the end of the class, that would be nice. But if you have any immediate thing that you want to ask, please go ahead and type it on the chat or Q&A. Um, as the last two times, like the last two times, um, let's make this an engaging uh, conversation. So would love to hear your um, feedback, your ideas um, as we go along. So starting off, uh, would love to hear from you. What does it mean to be a benefactor? How would you define a benefactor? who does good to everyone, those who help others, thinks good about others. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? One who gives to other souls, giving in the form of blessings, vibrations to enable them to become a better version of themselves, good wishes. Yes. Indeed, someone who brings um, benefit, right? Who gives, like all of you are saying, who shares, uh, who gifts to others, who's always thinking about the others. And um, it, it basically, for them, their motto is, what can I offer to others? How can I bring benefit to others? They have no ulterior motive of getting anything in the return because they've understood whenever... I expect something in return, then I become shallow. That is, um, because whenever we expect, right, we are feeling empty. We don't know how to give back because if I am expecting, then I destroy my ability to give, my ability to love because my love dies thinking I gave, they haven't returned back. So how can I like them? Instead, I dislike them. So when we realize at every moment how our actions are impacting our qualities, our virtues, if they're destroying, then why would I perform such an action? So this is a very deep point when we realize that if I want to receive, if I want to get, if I am expecting acknowledgement, thank you, appreciation, then it means I am empty. I am not ready to give anymore till somebody gives back to me. So I'm really become a business person. I'm no more the selfless being who wants to give. So a benefactor attitude really means the one who wants to give because it's just the joy of giving not because they have a whole plan here. I'm giving, now they're going to praise me. Now they're going to like me. They're going to talk about me to others. That's no such planning. Um, and true, keep doing the good actions. Don't worry about the results. And in, in India, they would say, Neki kar darya me dal. It means do good and put it in the river. It means forget about it. The return is automatic. It is the law of the universe. If you have given, you will get back the same energy. And obviously, if we are giving sorrow to others, that energy will come back to us automatically. So we want to be clear on what do we want to give. And it's a very beautiful quote from Brahma Kumari's uh, true world benefactor is one who shelters others by the power of their blessings and good wishes. This is such a big power. You know, others, if they're feeling scared, if they're feeling very fearful, your good wishes, your blessings, that is when you are in that powerful state, selfless state of giving to others, your good wishes can remove their fears, can remove their anxiety. That much is the power of a being who's a benefactor. Each one of us has these have these powers. It's a 
thing if we are using or not. That's a different story. Um, all right. I thought there was one more thing, but uh, um, what are the benefits of being a benefactor? If you develop the attitude of being a benefactor, what are some um, merits you will see in your life? Any responses on that? Yeah, joy. Yes, you would certainly experience a lot of joy because you're giving joy to others. Accumulate blessings, yes, and power. You feel the satisfaction of helping. We will get back what we give. Wonderful, great thoughts. We all automatically receive. We'll get respect and blessings. Very good. And uh, just to summarize what you all have already mentioned, we win the friendship and cooperation of many. You know, our every benevolent act they don't need a benevolent act or the benefactor doesn't need to say words or really give something. It's really happening incognito. Majority of the actions of a benefactor will be incognito. That is their heart is always wishing very pure uh, thoughts. They're only wanting good of others. Uh, you know, their life be beautiful, their relationship be good, their career be successful. So when your heart is so full of Good, good wishes, then automatically there is such a positive aura in you that you attract people. They want to help you because even if you're not saying it in words, they feel your blessings. Um, indeed, if you are a benefactor, you accumulate so much spiritual wealth that is the soul uh, gets the karma results. You know, you're sowing the seeds of good karma that is good deeds then automatically all of those good deeds the soul when it leaves the body also it takes with it these deeds the return of it is bound to come back because the soul is imperishable it's every the result of every action is also imperishable and um, like one of you said they they are filled with abundance they never feel there is anything lacking in them. Their whole life is about what else can I do to give? You know, um, I, I used to, before I came to Brahma Kumaris, there was a part of me which wanted to experience selflessness. So I would keep looking, you know, for online ads to do volunteering. And um, when I reflect back on, and I would very rarely find any opportunities that would match my time slot because I was an extremely busy person um, with kids and work and uh, really didn't know how to, I didn't have that much energy and power at that particular moment. I was still very active, but nothing compared to what I am now. So, because and I wonder why I would want to volunteer because in our day-to-day -day living, we become so self-centered. It's all about me, you know, my hair, my skin, my, uh, my body, or my, my kids, my husband, my parents, at the most, a little bit, my friends. All we think about is me and my immediate ones. There is no thought about what is going on in the world. How, is, how can I be there out for everyone? So we are so caught up in our small, small issues that we have no time to be a benefactor. When we develop this attitude that every moment I want to give to others, forget about me and my problems, such a person feels abundance. They will be naturally happy. Like for me in my old days, I had to work hard to be happy, socialize, go out, hang out with people. I had to work hard to be happy. A person who's a benefactor, they are naturally happy. Because at every moment, they're getting blessings from others. They have no desires of their own. And such a person ends up receiving blessings from everyone, including God. 
because literally it is there acting like a god it's the it's only god is the only being that brings benefit to everyone he's the only one who's the world benefactor and somewhat who's working at that level automatically gets a lot of blessings and um, in when they have any kind of difficult moments many people will run they will drop everything and come to help this person in crisis you will not have to do anything you will not have to ask people will just come and take care of your problems they have received your silent benefit your good wishes so your problems even before they come they get resolved and like some of you have already said you 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 are building such a bank balance of spiritual wealth every good deed is basically you are writing your beautiful powerful destiny good deed is the pen through which you can write your beautiful destiny how much ever big you want so the more benefit we bring to others the more our future becomes bright prosperous full of goodness and uh, it makes us selfless very very selfless uh, old megna was very very self centered um and uh, and that's why at the part of me because a soul is a pure soul every human soul is selfless we are we've been in such a long journey that we've forgotten that we are selfless beings we are pure beings so there was a part of me that could feel the burden of that self centered life that that's why i would keep looking for those volunteering opportunities i wanted to do something selflessly so a person who is bringing benefit they can experience that bliss of being selfless bliss joy anand these things can never be experienced through people objects work recognition they can never be experienced but when you realize you don't need anything for yourself of course your body needs food air water rest all of that but you don't need anything to be happy when you realize that because as you're bringing benefit to other people's life you will naturally feel happy your face will be smiling for no reason it will be glowing with love and warmth such a person from that selfless state they experience complete bliss it's a very powerful state so how do we develop the attitude of being a benefactor question for you all how do we develop this attitude what are some key ingredients needed to become a benefactor attitude of gratitude yes being open and flexible positive thoughts start with being a benefactor for the self first very good pure feelings cooperative amazing you all have already all the answers this is fantastic makes my uh, sharing lot more easy um so like one of you said um yeah and ensure that we are deeply rested on our seat of self respect very powerful thank you manpreet um and so indeed we cannot bring benefit to others if we haven't benefited ourselves through self care think about it if all you have in your heart is some uh, bitter memories some things that went wrong they did this or they didn't do this or i hurt someone i failed whatever it might be if your heart is filled with bitterness misery then you cannot be the benefactor 
because indeed there is nobody's life where they have not made a mistake or others have not a mistake others have not been ill treated every each one of us have had our own share of good and bad but self care is that part which enables us to look past all of that and make sure that we stay healthy spiritually and emotionally so self care is not just the physical exercise that is taking care of the body many people self care means exercising a little bit of yoga which is the physical yoga i am talking about or at the most go to spas and massages that is really not self care at all or go to shopping mall that is worse that is not at all self care so self care here we are really talking about this particular mind and our heart heart of the soul mind of the soul are constantly talking they are talking about whether they are disturbed happy everything am i listening to this inner chatter if i am not listening to it i cannot bring benefit to others in fact i will not even be able to bring full benefit to my family forget about the world we can't even bring benefit to our own family if we ourselves are looking for help so taking care of yourself is the most important aspect because if you are not nurtured you cannot nurture others impossible if your heart is filled with pain you will end up giving pain to others it's we are not intending to but we can't help it we can't help it and um, in raj yoga meditation we ignite a light within that we are not this physical being just the physical body but we are this spiritual being soul a point of light who is naturally eternally peaceful loving and joyful we once again remember who we are that i don't need to go shopping and find peace love and joy it is inside of me and i belong to the ocean of peace love and joy god himself so if all my needs can be met by this spiritual powerhouse god he is the only one that can meet my needs because he is a selfless forever benefactor he never expects anything in return god only gives and gives and selflessly unlimitedly gives so when a soul connects to the supreme soul his purity his powers his benevolence just heals the soul for me like really lot of my past you know which which was nothing was luckily um, terrible but we all have certain bitter memories and they are small small ones we glorify them make them too big they are not worth a penny but we make them 100 dollars worth so those memories even the traces of them were erased many of my weak habits they were destroyed and i started having so much clarity in what is truth and what is falsehood i could see the evil in me and the goodness in me very clearly because god is truth there is no other higher truth he is the only one that is forever truth he never forgets we on the other hand go through the cycle of life and death we forget everything and there's lot of falsehood selfishness meanness weaknesses that accumulate in us indeed there is still some strengths that remain we do have love but that love is not unconditional that love is not for everyone whereas he is ocean of love so the more the soul connects to the supreme soul it will feel that everything of the past bitterness is gone weaknesses are getting removed and clarity of what is good what is right what is wrong will be very very crisp there will be no confusion that much is the power i saw in my early days it was just mind blowing and the more you meditate 
you will realize that everything that you were looking for, you were wanting others to call you, you already are all of that. Soul is not an ordinary creation. Human soul is the most elevated creation made in the exact image of God. When we realize what fantastic beauties and virtues exist within us, then it becomes very easy to give to others. But when we think all of these things are outside or I have to do something to experience this, then we end up being the one with missings and lackings. So if I am in pain, then I will end up giving pain to others. So um, just a few more thoughts and then we can uh, maybe open it up to questions uh, if you have any. Like many of you already pointed out, um, this attitude of being a benefactor, one is that it makes you feel very, very abundant, full, spiritually full, full of peace, love and joy. Plus, you will find the more you give, the more you receive. It's a vicious cycle. You know, you keep receiving from the universe, from God, from people, and you just can't help it but give. After some time, you will not even like consciously be giving, like I have to give good wishes to this. It's just automatic, your presence itself, because you're not looking at anyone to receive anything. You don't have any thoughts of receiving. Oh, I said this nicely. Now they're going to praise me. I did something very nice for them yesterday. I'm sure they're going to call me out. There is no such thought of begging. So when a person is not begging or is expecting something to come back in return, they're actually giving. A selfless being whose aura has become so pure that their presence heals people around them. They feel peace, love or joy. And even mother nature feels calmness in their presence. And you can see how certain people's aura, many research have been done on this, their entire brain, the structure of the brain cells of such selfless being has, is completely transformed. And uh, so if you can just hold on for your question, maybe towards the end, uh, would appreciate that. But feel free to uh, pose your questions on the chat and Q&A. Um, so just their presence, you know, matter changes, people changes. So it's an amazing state to be in. Um, so some of these thoughts are, I bring benefit to others because that is who I am, a benefactor. Many times we stop being, bringing benefit to others because we always have this calculative mind. We are habituated um, you know, to always expect, which is more of a beggar form. I did this, this, and in relationships, we have this a lot. I did. Now your turn to do. I gave so much already. I gave a lot more than what you have ever given me. Now, at least you give me something. I did 10 hours of work yesterday. You at least do one hour. We keep expecting. So if I am doing things only so that others will also do or give me something, then there is no point of doing because I'm not doing with pure intentions. I'm doing so that I get something. Till we don't have this inside understanding that I'm doing because this is who I am. It gives me joy to bring benefit. And many times we also, um, you know, feel like all my life I've only given, given. I've only tried to understand my family. I've always been there for them, but nobody understands me. Nobody is, you know, uh, there for me. Nobody cares for me. Sometimes it's quite possible that we ourselves are maybe bit in a very sensitive state or maybe have too many expectations, or it's quite possible that in our previous birth or even in this birth, we've given less and received too much. So there is a debt. 
you know, debt with our uh, family or debt with someone else. Um, so when we have such kind of debts, you know, where we have taken too much from others, where they have been very understanding towards us, then I have to return back that favor by being understanding. Till I don't give what I have already received, they, nobody is going to be ready to give back to me. So if I am not receiving love or peace, it means I have not donated enough. There is a law of attraction. There is a law of action and reaction. So if my action, I will only be sending negative energy, then that is what is coming back to me. And um, sometimes we start comparing, you know, in the household that I am the only one who's doing everything for the family, the partner is not doing, or the kids are not doing, or the in-laws are not doing, or the parents are not doing, something or the other goes on in our head. But maybe, maybe they just don't have the capacity like you do. You've been blessed with this strong personality who can do many things and still not be tired. You have that personality of bringing benefit to many. You have that personality of managing many different tasks. So you, your capacity is different. So a lot of times we compare with others and we stop being a benefactor thinking, why should I only do? Well, you have the capacity, so do. And uh, few different ways to bring benefit is one of the biggest benefits is when you are adjusting nature. Generally, in a family of four, we have four different personalities that we are working with. And if each one of them says, I am right, I am right, I am right. That's very difficult, very, very difficult. And um, but instead, if we are, you know, willing to adjust, it's OK. Who how does it matter whose opinion, whose idea? who goes forward, it is fine, I can adjust. And being detached, you know, not always having this hard and fast rules, this should be like this, this is how you should behave, this is how you should live in the house and blah, blah, too many conditions. Instead being detached and giving everyone that space um, and supporting other people's viewpoint. When we get into this kind of mode, then we are becoming very, very beneficial to others because in there is no intention that my idea or my way of thinking or you know the way I am saying things, those are the only ways it needs to be implemented. You're very open. And obviously, if others' viewpoint is not right, you will certainly again defend and say why you are saying what you're saying. And with young ones, you might take a firm stand that saying that no this is how it is going to be because the other way is unhealthy or unsafe right so yes it's possible sometimes you have a stand which you don't want to compromise on but the overall idea is when we are flexible when we are humble and when we stay detached we bring a lot of benefit to the family and um, and what I have seen is that when you adjust so much with others, and then when there is something really, you know, you have a viewpoint and you really want that viewpoint to go forward, then the entire family will support you. You don't even have to say a lot of words or, uh, you know, create, come up with an argument on why I'm suggesting what I'm suggesting. You have given them such strong yes energy. You've always adjusted. Yes, let's do it like this they can't help it but say yes to what you are now suggesting. I've seen this to be such a profitable um, business formula, although it's not to be done in that manner. But you end up giving very little by adjusting here and there. And the entire family adjusts to you on your big agenda items. So who is the smarter one here? But... Um, that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in today's class. Uh, just wanted to give you one more time the announcement of tomorrow. We are starting this uh, Thanksgiving reflections, how to develop uh, the attitude of gratitude, really make our heart very, very warm, always appreciative and happy, uh, 7.30 to 8 for one week every day. 
And um, we also have Raj Yoga meditation course starting on December 4th, both in Hindi and in English available. And uh, Brahma Kumaris also uh, conducts uh, free well-being uh, uh, webinars at workplaces. So if you want a webinar to be conducted at your workplace, feel free to reach out at all the links. Um, they have been posted on the chat there. So you could um, certainly select from your chat and sign up for any of these events. With that, pretty much um, any thoughts or questions. And feel free to um, unmute yourself. So maybe those raised hands were uh, accidental. Is that maybe no questions? Um, I had a question. Uh, so basically like if you have ill feelings towards others, like what is the best way? Because sometimes it's not that you don't want to have good feelings, but it just gets difficult. So just wanted your suggestions. Yeah. It's good to, um, you know, in the morning, uh, sit in silence and uh, really see yourself in a bigger picture, you know, who you really are. Uh, when we get very attached to that uh, small life of ours, me, my family, and this and that, my job, when we have that limited visions, there are a lot of uh, desires and expectations. So the ill feelings are typically generated because of some desires, uh, you know, the desires that either people should treat us in certain manner, do certain things, behave in certain manner. Um, so there are a lot of desires when we look in that limited manner. Um, but when we look at ourselves in Nirvana, this is the picture of Nirvana and 8 billion souls, each one of them is a pure being of light. When we are here in this place, we are all a big family. There is no like personal, this is my child, this is my husband, this is my parent. No, nothing. Because we all know the soul's relationships are limited to this birth. Next birth, who is my husband? Who is my kids? We all know nothing. So this viewpoint of a bigger picture every day is very important. Otherwise, we get attached to our viewpoint. They should be like this. Indeed, they are like that. Look at them here. But once they enter the physical world, including me and them, we forget. We forget who we are and we get caught up. Um, so when you see yourself as a pure being and when you see others also, automatically this mercy that man, what went wrong? How come they became the person they did? My heart is only wishing that they also, you know, get help. They also become better because they must be in pain if they are giving pain to others. Nobody can hurt others without hurting internally. And this was one of the actually very positive responses that came in um, one of the... Um, I think the family time we had where kids and uh, parents were participating, where one of the kids said, we were talking about bullies and how do you deal with it? And they said, no, the bully is not a bully just like that. You know, they have been ill-treated. That's why they are a bully. And I was like, wow, what smart kids, right? So coming to Nirvana and watching everyone really helps us realize that not only are we pure and fully capable of forgiving, and having good wishes, but we know that original nature of this other person also was full of love and forgiveness. It becomes easy when you detach yourself from that current story of the current birth.
And on top of it, if you don't have good wishes or ill feel, and um, then for one particular person, unknowingly, your bad wishes or your ill feelings will actually get offloaded to your own family. You will not even know when you'll get irritated with either your kids or your partner or whoever that might be because you couldn't maintain good wishes for someone. So you remain to keep, you, you decide and choose to keep good wishes, not because, just because you are this great person, but mainly because if you don't, then you damage your own self and your family. Any other thoughts or questions? Om Shanti, sister. Om Shanti. Yeah, um, um, it's very true that um, that you said um, when we, in a family, when we keep saying like, oh, I'm the only one who's giving, you know, nobody gives me return. And it becomes, every day becomes very hard, very, um, very, you know, very stressful. But when you start detaching ourselves, I have felt this after coming to Brahma Kumaris. Um, I used to be like that. Oh, why? Why do I have to do everything by myself? Why you don't do like for like an hour, you know? But I have felt that I mean, when when I detach myself, like when I see the other person as a soul, not like husband or like kids, then automatically it my day go, goes very calm and cool, and then you know work become very easier too and faster too, and you don't, I don't even see like other person is not doing like it's, it just happens automatically. It's very, very true. Thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, there. Um, and if I can just add on to your own story, very, very similar um, experience for me as well, that um, um, there were multiple factors going on. First of all, when when we are in that limited uh, viewpoint, a lot of times we see what we are doing and we only notice on what others are not doing. But we don't fully notice that what is their contribution. You know, they are also doing things, but we kind of like very quickly say, oh, that's very small, that's very trivial, I'm doing more, I'm doing more. It's possible. But... Um, one way or the other, you started your life together and you chose to do all of those things, which was me, actually. A lot of the things I chose. And now you are, you are keeping at it. You are continuing to do it. Nobody really asked you to do all of those things that you are doing. And now you feel overwhelmed because, you know, why am I only the one who is doing? Well, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Who's asking you to do it? But we start blaming others that, hey, you know, you don't do as much as I do. Well, if you don't want to do, don't do. They never said, I'm going to do all these things also for the house. So if we don't have these kind of talks early on and set expectations on who will do what, how can we be together as a family? Because especially if both the partners are working um, and there are kids involved, we certainly need help. We can't be this superwoman who's doing everything. Um, so I actually realized multiple things that my partner was also actually helping out in many um, different ways in their own manner. Plus many of the things I was doing, it was my own decision. And I had started from the beginning, then why am I crying now? If I don't want to do them, I always had a choice. Or if I wanted to get some external help, I had a choice. But when I am choosing, where is the blame game? Right. So, um, and again, very true, detaching and seeing myself as a soul and seeing the other person as a soul. And when I'm working also, I don't see that, hey, I am working. I feel I am making my body do the work. So I am just sitting there like a master, commanding my body, who's my beautiful assistant, server. It does everything. So I don't feel heavy. I did, I did. No, I didn't do anything. I sat here as a soul and I watched the body do all the work. It's a huge difference between asking an assistant to do the work versus you yourself doing the work. 
So I feel light. Oh, what did I do? I did nothing. I just sat here. And I'm now I'm going to thank the body, man. Body, what a fantastic assistant you are. You got so much done today. You might think this is very silly. Try it. It is so powerful, your body, and you will not be tired. And you will get so much done in a very quick manner. That much is the power of detachment. Any other questions or thoughts? Any other experiences you would like to share? All good. You know, I think always uh, thinking about um, bringing benefit, we should always think of those scenarios, you know, when the kids are uh, behaving rather rudely um, or they're being a little disobedient. Um, thank you there, Srinivas. Um, and um, if suppose the kid is not, um, you know, listening to us, not behaving well, speaking very rudely to us, we have to even think about you know, meditation is this. Think about those points where you were not able to benefit. You were not able to bring benefit to your family. In fact, you either yelled or you withdrew or you said, I'm not going to help or you just became silent. You didn't want to respond to them because and, and, and certainly if you reflect back, it will be because you were expecting something. When we expect something, we can't benefit. We can't bring benefit, right? Because oh, I need benefit. Somebody should benefit me. So we are not a benefactor anymore. So check in those situations in your meditation. What could you have done differently? How could you have shifted internally so that you could have still brought benefit in that situation? How could you have? Most of the times the answer would be to remain silent and patient. And the second thing is to maintain faith that your child is also a beautiful being. This one rudeness doesn't mean your child is a gone case or uh, you are a bad mother or anything like that. It does at that particular moment, just being silent and patient itself is bringing benefit in that situation. And at a later stage, have a conversation, you know, to challenge the child or the family member who was misbehaving to understand what happened with the intention that, hey, you are never really like this. Or maybe recently I'm seeing this kind of attitude. What's happened? You're generally such a sweet child of mine. What happened? Did I do something wrong? This is again called being bringing benefit. But when I want benefit, hey, I wanted that respect. I'm your mother. You're supposed to talk to me like this means what? I'm saying, hey, you bring benefit to me. Benefactor doesn't want anything from the world. They want to only give. Their purpose is to give. This intention, people will think it is hard to practice. It is actually the most easiest. And practice and see how much you will actually end up getting from others. You will not have to ask anymore. They will want to give to you automatically. So such a person never loses out on anything. They actually get a lot more help, a lot more cooperation. People want to do things the way this person wants to do because they've seen so much benefit from this person's personality. So today, think of some situations, you know, which might be a little difficult with either family um, or tomorrow at work if you are working and see what you can do in that situation beforehand plan. What can you do differently so that you bring benefit in that same situation where you end up either being mad or somebody else becomes restless? What can you do differently? And it doesn't really mean to speak so many words or do any action. It's literally internally, how, go, how are you going to think and feel? So with that, pretty much, uh, we come to the end of session. If you have a moment, please stay back for a short meditation. Oh, and we don't have a class next week uh, because it's Thanksgiving, but we will see you in the December 1st week uh, with the fourth class of um, Attitudes. I am the child of the world benefactor. God, the supreme energy.
God is the only being that can satisfy all my needs. He's the only one that can heal me, restore me back to my natural, healthy self. People, objects, name and fame, they only make me dependent and they diminish my powers. So I refuse to be dependent on external world. I rely on my inner powers and God. And in every step of life, I do everything to bring benefit to others. I give because that is who I am. I give because it brings me joy. I am a selfless being who gives, gives, and only gives. Thank you all for joining me today. Hope you have a beautiful week ahead. Thank you and Om Shanti.